Surprise starters. The post-spring football depth chart is out for the Cougars. And there's a few names on the list that you might not expect. The Zig Apple. If you thought BYU's lack of draftees was a problem, Ziggy is the answer. And post-game pursuit will show you what the future holds for BYU athletes who aren't headed to the pros. I'm Corey Aldis. I'm Carson McKinley. It's a tradition unlike any other. It's time for the tube. Basketball is finally over. You know, we have breaking news coming out of football. BYU Athletic Director Tom Homo has just announced a football series with the Arizona Wildcats. The first game will be played in 2016 on a neutral site at the NFL's University of Phoenix Stadium, in, followed by a 2018 game in Tucson and back here in Provo in 2020. All right, great. Well, speaking of football, spring football has come to a close, and Bronco Mendenhall released the post-spring depth chart. Taysom is the only QB with any playing experience, so it's no surprise to see him on top. Fellow sophomore Ammon Olsen will serve as his backup. Jamal Williams tops the running backs, and Michael Elisa returns after missing most of 2012 with a broken arm. Looking at receivers, Cody Hoffman is in his usual spot, but on the other side, we see a bit of a surprise with Skylar Ridley beating out Ross Oppo. Ridley had a big game to start 2012, but was quiet for the rest of the season. Riker Matthews anchors the O-line on the blind side with four potential new starters filling out the line, but some big recruits coming in means that is subject to change. Ethan Molly Manuma will be clogging up the middle again after being granted a medical red shirt, and Remington Peck will have to fill the hole left by Ziggy. Linebacking course still has Hadley and Kyle Van Noy on the outside, but Tyler Beck and Wani Unga look to get opportunities as starters inside. It's shocking to see Jacob Hanneman even on the depth chart. He didn't play spring football. The boister has shown off his wheels on the baseball diamond. Can't wait for the season to arrive. Back in the 90s, the king of New York was a guy named Biggie. But this year, there's a new guy ascending to the throne, and he goes by the name of Ziggy. In the span of three years, Ezekiel Ziggy Ansah has taken his act from the playgrounds of Ghana to the bright lights of Broadway and to the brink of BYU NFL history. The last time Cougar fans heard a BYU player's name called in the top 10 of the draft, 1982. Of course, a character named Jim McMahon, he went fifth overall. Ziggy could go higher. Most analysts project him to go between the second and 10th pick, and it all goes down a week from Thursday. He's one of only 23 players invited to the Big Apple. Ziggy is one of the lucky ones who actually makes it to the next level, but what about the ones who don't make it? Cougtube reporter Mark Chalice shows us what comes next for the BYU athletes who will be going pro in something other than sports. When BYU fans think of Craig Cusick, they think of this game-winning putback against Utah State. Now he's graduating and basketball will be just a memory. And with an accounting degree in his pocket, Cusick will be set to pursue his real-life dream. My dream is to start my own business. So that's the dream, but uh, I might have to obviously go work somewhere for a few years and get some experience. It's the same for the large majority of BYU athletes as well. They put their athletic careers behind them at graduation. BYU athletes are used to the spotlight. Thousands of people have walked through these doors and into the Marriott Center to see them play. But now that they're graduating, they're going to have to move on to their private lives and private careers. Athletes prepare for those careers here in the Student Athlete Academic Center. It's here that they really define their futures because their studies are more likely to give them a W in the long run. Going into their senior year, they really realize, okay, is, am I going to be able to make a career out of this sport or not? And that's when I really start seeing a change in, in, and a, a refocus on, okay, the career part's also important. The academic center doesn't abandon athletes at graduation. They continue to work with them to help them into the career field. On the BYU campus, Mark Chalice, CoogTube. NCAA reports say the percentage of college athletes who go pro is below 2% in all sports except baseball, which sits just above 10% because of its extensive minor league system. Well, one of those seniors on the fence is Brandon Davies. He's playing in the Portsmouth Invitational Tournament right now with a number of other draft prospects. In fact, in the only game so far, he put up 16 points, 8 boards, 5 assists, 2 steals, and a block. His versatility has a number of NBA draft websites seen Davies as a potential second-round pick. And we brought in CoogTube reporter, the one and only Rachel Schwartz, to break down his possible pro career. Okay, Rachel, as far as Davies goes in the NBA, what are his strengths saying that the experts are saying he could be drafted? 
Well, unfortunately, for the most part, he's gone largely unnoticed throughout the season, but scouts love the talent and they think Davies has the talent and versatility that they can work with to help develop him. He put up just under 18 points and in this season and he has the ability to stretch the floor as a forward. He can score, be aggressive on the boards when he wants to and continues to improve his ability to pass out of the double. Now it's not much of a risk to take Davies in the second round. He has the skill set to score inside 26% of his shots come inside the paint and he shoots a ridiculous 83% in that area. What about his weaknesses, those that might prevent him from being drafted? Well, first and foremost, Davies really needs to polish up his offensive game. He can get pushed around a lot in the paint. We saw players like Olenek and Harris from Gonzaga body up Davies in the post. He also tends to force up contested shots and has a tough time getting around long athletic defenders. With how physical the players are in the NBA, it'll be interesting to see if he steps up his game out, if he steps his game out a few feet or improves his post. All right, can't wait to see. As always, thanks, Rachel. It's national championship or bust for the men's volleyball team, and the boys took a big step towards regaining the title on Friday. BYU scrapped and clawed to a five-set victory on the road at UC Santa Barbara, clinching the MPSF regular season title outright for the first time since 2004. Taylor Sander and Ben Patch led the charge with 18 and 19 kills respectively. The title in the bag, the Cougs looked uninspired at UCLA on Saturday. The Bruins smashed BYU in three sets, ending the road team's 12-match winning streak. UCLA recorded an astounding 50 kills with 481 hitting percentage. While the Bruins were firing on all cylinders, BYU's train never left the station. This one was ugly. Cougs lose three sets to zero. The best of the best were under one roof on Wednesday night. Cougar athletes of all sorts attended the Y Awards to celebrate and relive the highlights of a great year. Cougar Tour reporter Clark Gerber tells us who brought home the hardware. BYU rolled out the blue carpet on Wednesday, capping a great year in Cougar athletics in the swankiest way possible. Junior linebacker Kyle Van Noy showed he can dominate in his dress clothes as well, winning the Male Athlete of the Year and Performance of the Year awards. Picked up by Kyle Van Noy, 15-10, crossing the field to the five, get in, get in, touchdown! Kyle Van Noy, oh yeah, KVN does it again! Not to be outdone, Van Noy's teammate Cody Hoffman took home the male crowd pleaser award after his dominating junior season. And on the hardwood, Craig Cusick's buzzer beater to top Utah State won play of the year, but the senior guard didn't let it go to his head. What people don't see in that, in that clip is that I was, I was 0 for 7 before that in the game and almost lost the game for us. Women's soccer added to their historic Elite Eight season as the women's team of the year. Goalie Eric Owens rose up as the women's crowd pleaser, and defender Lindsey Lizenby Cutshaw scored Women's Athlete of the Year honors. Jared Ward and Ryan Boyce have unofficially duked it out for best mustache all year, but found some worthy competition in athletic director Tom Holmo. Um, that thing was nasty. <laughs> On BYU campus, Clark Gerber, CoogTube. When CoogTube returns, Left hanging, BYU baseball put runners on the bags but couldn't bring them home. And double-double, the softballers had four games in two days. See if UVU was double trouble for the Cougs. After getting rained out the last two games, it's only fitting for the Cougars to take on a team whose mascot is a wave. Portland was in town and the fans braved the cold to support their Cougs. Early opportunity for BYU, they have the bases juiced and Brock Whitney at the plate. Now when he has one homer on the year, could he pick up the grand slam? Uh, not quite. Portland gets out of the jam unscathed. Next inning, you don't see this often, folks. A perfectly executed suicide squeeze that scores the first run of the game. But BYU answers in the bottom of the second with this RBI single by Jared Jarvis. And it's Kelton Caldwell who comes in to score. But Portland would start to pull away in the fifth. This time it's Cody Lanahan knocks this ball down the line to score another run. The BYU bats picked it up though in the seventh. It's Jacob Hanneman sending the pitch back up the middle. Two more runs come in and all of a sudden the Cougars are within two. But that's when Portland's Kramer Scott said, all right guys, enough of this. He sends it deep to right over everyone's head and into the trees. That's a two run shot. BYU left 10 players stranded on base as the waves crashed the Cougar comeback party 8-4. It was more bad news for the team after the game. Carson Jacob Hanneman got into it with an umpire and the ump tossed him. Because it happened post-game, there's a rule that says the player earns an automatic two-game suspension. Yeah, that's no good at all. The team just got back above 500 and Hanneman's one of their best players. So it's going to be tough for them. 
He's tied for the team high in home runs with three on the season, also tied for the most doubles with eight. He's slugging a ridiculous 542. Clearly, he's accounting for a lot of the Cougar offense right now. Well, it's okay. He's only out two games, but every game does count, especially after dropping the first one of this series to Portland. Now, Carson, the Cougars are really going to need Jacob Rugman not only to continue, but to elevate his offensive production this weekend. Baseball team did have some luck last weekend when they headed out to sunny California for a three-game set with the Santa Clara Broncos. Bats woke up as BYU out hit Santa Clara 30 to 12 in three games. That was more than enough offense for the pitching staff. Ace Desmond Paulson tossed a complete game, giving up just one run, and the Cougars left NorCal with a decisive three-game sweep. A three-game series in sunny California goes off without a hitch, but April baseball in Provo can be a little more dicey. Rain and snow kept the Cougars in the clubhouse for two games in the week. Washington State had to hit the road without even seeing a pitch in Provo. And a Deseret dual game will have to wait until mid-May. With more than a third of the BYU roster coming out of California and Arizona, it's a whole new ball game. It's a little interesting when you can't really feel your fingers and you're trying to throw a baseball. Provo might not have had the best weather, but at least Logan had enough sunshine for the Aggies to host BYU softball Wednesday. Jenna Gore got the party started for BYU with an RBI single in the third. Then the Cougs blew it open in the fifth behind a three-run dinger from Madison Robb. BYU finished the Aggies like a cheesecake, 5-0. After playing back-to-back -back double headers last weekend, I'm surprised the Cougars had enough energy to score five runs on Wednesday. The double-double header was against Parkway rival UVU. On Friday, the Cougs split against the Wolverines, winning the first game 2-1 in extras and dropping the second 6-4. Let's take a look at Saturday's games. We jump to the bottom of the sixth where we're tied. Jasmine Cortinas hits this solo bomb to put the freeway foes on top, two to one. But the Cougs weren't ready to go away. Gordy Bravo ties it in the seventh with this blooper. Bailey Hicken scores. The tie went hold though with one out in the seventh. Jamie North finished off BYU with this walk-off single. UVU leads the bout two to one, heading into the final round Saturday afternoon. Gets loose, hoping to help salvage the series. In the second, BYU jumps out to an early lead when Anna Hudson blasts this double. Alexander Sh Sandra Shamo scores, and Allman went to work. She piled up eight strikeouts on the day, allowing two earned in six innings of work. One of those runs came on a solo shot from Kristen Jackham in the fourth. Carly Duckworth thought she had lucked into a game-winning RBI when Jackham let this one slip in the seventh. Not so fast, UVU answered scoring on a wild pitch in the bottom of the seventh. We're headed back to extras. As if they hadn't played enough softball already, that's in the 10th. That's right, the 10th. Both teams get to a start with a base runner on second. Katie Manuma takes advantage for BYU by grounding into the game winning out. When Duckworth scores from the third, UVU couldn't answer. Softball will be back to their conference schedule this weekend as they, as they play host to Loyola Marymount. Cougars are 10-2 lifetime against LMU. Oil is hot right now, riding a four-game winning streak after sweeping St. Mary's. It's going to be a busy weekend at Miller Field. Softball has four games, and baseball will finish off a three-game series against Portland tonight and tomorrow afternoon. With the great weather this weekend, everyone yeah. needs to get out to Miller Perfect Park. Perfect timing when CougTube returns. Deseret Duel will show you if another year's worth of Cougars versus Utes has BYU fans seeing red or Utah fans feeling blue. And Richards building ruckus. Titans clash into the pressure cooker of the intramural playoffs. We'll be right back. 2012-2013 sports season is almost over. Another year of the BYU-Utah rivalry is reaching its end. KuTube reporter Fang Pham shows us a flashback through the rivalry games that made up this year's Deseret First Duel between the two programs. The BYU-Utah rivalry is one of the oldest and most fierce college athletic rivalries. Tension started in 1895 when the first baseball game between the two schools ended in a brawl. However, it took more than 100 years for an official event to recognize the supremacy between the two athletic programs. When Deseret First Credit Union partnered with them to create the Deseret First Duel in 2007. So we created the Deseret First Duel as a way to measure the rivalry in all of the sports that they compete head to head with. The two programs compete in 12 sports creating a 50-point scoring system to determine the eventual winner. The university that wins the duel each year has its name engraved here on this large granite monument in the Student Athlete Building. The following year's bragging right goes to the students, alumni and employees of the school that comes out on top. This year, things went well for the youths from the beginning. They beat BYU in women's soccer game, making it the only regular season loss for the Lady Cougars. 
Though the Cougars got back with a win in women's volleyball, even with this play from BYU, the U still came home with a dramatic football victory. Utah dug the deficit deeper with wins in both swim meets, but the Cougars took control in basketball, beating the Lady U's 53 to 48. And this drive from Tyler Hawes helped BYU defeat Utah by three points. Cougars men's tennis tied the duo with the win in February. But the youths came out strong in March with the win in women's tennis and left BYU's gymnasts hanging their head in shame for the 88th time out of their 90 meets, giving Utah a commanding 25-19 lead in the duo. The duo trophy awarded to the winners of each game or series as an incentive to an already intense rivalry. I think it's always a different game when you play in the rivalry game, but at the end of that game or the end of that series to have them present you a trophy, I think it's a big deal for, the, for our student athletes. In Provo, Fong Fam, Coop 2. The Cougars won four of the f first five duels from 2007 to 2012. However, Utah's already clinched this year's title, taking home the trophy and a year's worth of bragging rights. Well, good for them. They needed it after their football and basketball teams combined for a winning percentage of 44. BYU women's volleyball helped the Utes keep that trend going, though, last Friday. Even though it's their offseason, we're always up for some friendly competition with the Utes. The Cougars racked up kill after kill. Six foot seven Jen Hampson couldn't be contained. She finished with 11 on the day. After splitting the first two sets, it was BYU who fought hard, winning the match three to one to send our favorite team in their red back to their nice little commuter school on the hill. The semester is ending and so are intramural sports. Tonight, two powerhouse and power hungry basketball teams will go head to head in the championship. Cook 2 reporter Stephanie Campbell headed to the RB to get a feel of the intense emotion surrounding the creature that is intramural championships. The Division I semifinals brought together two very talented teams, Prestige Worldwide and Ryan Evans. After an intense battle that attracted lots of fans and supporters, Prestige Worldwide's run for the ship came to an end. Well, honestly, the only words I could use to describe the loss I can't say on camera, but uh, I'm feeling a little better now because I got some cookies. Division I is the most difficult league in the tournament, and it's double elimination. Northwest is the champion of the winner's bracket with an automatic spot in the championship game tonight. But after coming out victorious in both their games this week, Ryan Evans is ready to challenge the guys that placed him in the loser's bracket almost a month ago. Getting a rematch against the guys that put us out the first time. We played them in a tough uh, first round match. We lost by four. Uh, we're looking to get a little bit of revenge. The satisfaction of winning might be one factor, but the key motivation for a lot of athletes is something else. These students sacrifice hours out of their social and school time just to practice and participate in games, all for the glory of winning that coveted championship t-shirt. But some say it's more about having a good time than winning it all. Intramurals is actually really competitive, but our team is pretty much the opposite of it. We're all good buddies. We just kind of poke fun at each other during the game. All evidence to the contrary. With the intramural extremists at the Richards Building, Stephanie Campbell, CoopTube. I'm all about winning that t-shirt. Oh, Ryan Evans and Northwest will face off at 6 p.m. in the RB, so the losers will have less than a week to shake it off before finals. While the winners, winners they can revel in their glory forever. When CoopTube comes back, predictions are done with and the bracket challenge is over. We'll tell you who came out on top after the break. And in honor of the last show, the weather is wonderfully fantastic. Will it stay that way? 11 weather when we return. Well, look at the beautiful ballpark there. The day looks fantastic. I'm excited for the beautiful weather. No clouds out there. If we look at what's going on right now, 43 degrees, just beautiful. Wind speeds are calm. Not too much, kind of a, a nice day to just be outside. Tonight for the baseball game, that starts at 6. Uh, the weather is going to be a little bit a little bit cooler. Temperatures are going to drop off, some clouds in the air. But it's going to be a great day to head out to the ballpark and check out the game. I'll definitely be there watching it, so you should join there too. If we go on the sat map for the last 24 hours, it's been pretty clear for us and seems like it will be clear for the next little bit, but you can see on the East Coast, they're getting whacked with a lot of weather there, um, some rain and things like that for them. But for us, it looks pretty nice. The highs of the state, things continue to warm up. Most everything is in the 40s and the 50s. St. George, the lone one in the 60s there. But as we continue to get later in, things will continue to warm up for us. 
right now perfect weather though. For what's going on the rest of the week, we're going to kind of have that high of 68 on Saturday and then it's going to level out uh, going into next week. The big issues could be Monday and Tuesday. We have a 20% chance of rain for Monday and Tuesday a 30% chance. But other than that, we're looking like we're going to have a good week for the uh, end of class. It's now time to take a last and final look at predictions from this year. Coming into first place in the bracket challenge is, oh, I guess that's me. Well, so close. at least for us on-air people, we technically have Derek, one of our producers and number one, but I'm just going to take the glory for this one <laughs> you since would. he is not here to talk. <laughs> well, if we take a look at our final records uh, for the rest of the year, Corey's 9-9, nine and nine. I'm once again tied with the reporters, 11 and 7, and Clint is taking oh, first place Clint. with 12 and 6. Oh, it feels good. I, I didn't even know this was coming. In fact, I, I didn't remember that I had won. It's touch, such a total surprise here. Um, just got a couple of words for everyone. This isn't rehearsed, so bear with me. First of all, I'd like to thank all of the Adamant fans out there that were, that were rooting for me. Your strong hands lifted me constantly, even when I buckled under that extreme prediction pressure. Some weeks were nastier than the weather, but I started strong and I finished triumphant. The victory is so sweet after the intense, bitter struggle. And as my personal mentor, Albus Dumbledore, once said, it's important to fight and fight again and keep fighting, for only then can evil be kept at bay, though never quite eradicated. Thank you again. Oh, I'm sorry. Wow. I'm just waking up. Well, I have to say, <laughs> that speech <laughs> put me to sleep. I didn't get the hey. chills, but Ugh. well, you should just bask in the glory now because I don't think you'll ever beat us in anything sports related oh. ever again. Oh. Ever it's just again. Luck. This is the last. I'm show, not liking so. this. I think I need some congratulation here. <laughs> I'm serious. the victor. I think we gave you your victory time there with that whole you speech know, we, that you had typed up. Carson, so. I think we feel bad for the weather guy. Oh. He doesn't yeah. get too much air <laughs> yes. time. We're all on TV a lot more than he <laughs> is. So. We hey. felt like he deserved his one shiny moment. I'm the only one and in the he crown. Took it, sorry. I'm the only yeah, one in the crown. It. That's all I have to say. Here's yes, the thing. you are. I will go on record and say that I have seen Clint play a couple of sports, some tennis. Uh, he's not really good at swimming <laughs> so either. Good. Can't Ooh, really run that well. Good. Well, you know, Clint. Yeah, you know, take this. Take this moment. Well, what's your secret, it. Clint? What What was the secret? Yeah. Thing? Well, yeah. the weather was things? unpredictable, <laughs> just like some of the games were unpredictable. So I just used my intense knowledge and my weatherman skills. Put so it to the test. Basically, <laughs> what it came down to is Clint flipped a coin <laughs> and he ended up winning. <laughs> Absolutely <Essentially> not. Yes. <laughs> well, that's it for Coop Tube, Friday, April 12th. If you want another look at the stories we did today or to share with your friends, check out the Coop Tube section of our website, 11news.byu.edu. Thanks for joining us and have a great afternoon and go Coops.